On this episode of ITAV, we take a look at security, voice control in corporate America, big data in AV, and best practices for wrapping up the year in your rec room. All that and more, next on ITAV. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is ITAV, episode 36, recorded Monday, December 2nd, 2019. Why data? Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Atlas IED, innovative audio solutions for every business environment. This is ITAV, the monthly look at the IT and AV industries and how they come together. My name is Tom Albright. I am your host with us to discuss the news and information we have gathered for the IT and AV industries. Mr. Michael Drainer from Drainer Technologies. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Albright. How are you doing today? Glad to be here. It is a beautiful day in December. We're wrapping up the year, which we'll get to in, in a second. Uh, first, though, a couple of stories. One uh, comes from our own website, avnation.tv. Sonos has acquired the AI uh, voice platform Snips. Uh, quote, unquote, from the article, uh, Sonos has agreed or announced the acquisition of Snips SAS, an AI voice platform for connected devices that provides private by design voice technology. This leads me into a couple of different conversations with you, actually, Michael. Um, one is as uh, voice becomes more and more prevalent in the commercial world, and we can argue back and forth, I think it's going to make more and more of a push. There are actually folks that are already developing on prem. Uh, voice control systems, typically for the government, uh, is the road they're going down. Uh, but there are some um, financial institutions that are looking at that as well because they don't like the whole, you're going to call back to a to server that's not ours. When we start, when the folks start deploying these systems, what are some of the things that they need to be aware of as far as their network and, and what that network is supposed, it should be able to support? Well, like anything, I mean, one of the, one of the, Security is first and foremost, right? Because that's that's kind of the premise of the discussion here. Um, you know, first of all, making sure you're following best practices for securing your network, because that's the whole point of bringing voice on-prem is to alleviate um, the egress of that data from leaving your environment. So what good does it do to bring an on-premise voice solution if your network's wide open and going to allow any Tom, Dick, or Harry to, no offense, Tom, Dick, or Harry, <laughs> to, to get in and access <laughs> that information, right? So um, th this is the natural progression. I'm actually really excited to see this because one of the great concerns that we do have is sending that voice information out to the nebulous cloud, right? Where is this actually going? Is it going into an IBM cloud, into a Google cloud, an Amazon cloud? Who controls that information? What's being logged? What's being recorded? How is my data being used to fortify the, the AI algorithms that are, that are analyzing this voice information, right? So by bringing this all on premise, uh, one, it allows you to control what is sent and what's not sent out to those services. Uh, it also brings a higher level of privacy uh, into the equation in, in the sense that you can use the algorithm as it stands and not share the information uh, with any third parties if you choose not to do that, provided those services allow for, for that type of, uh, of privacy. So, you know, when we talk about the network, the network impact really isn't that great, but it's more along the lines of making sure we're taking that layered approach of securing those servers, securing that network, uh, those internet connections as well to make sure that it is falling in line with the whole purpose of bringing voice on site, and that is privacy and security. So uh, walk me through this for a second, though, because I, I mentioned the government. they are also banking institutions. You and I both in, here in St. Louis, a large MasterCard uh, facility here uh, locally in town. Uh, talked with their folks, uh, their their technology folks, and, and and the their IT security team, which is just a step up below a SWAT team with with RJ forty five. But you know, when you're talking with folks and you go, okay, you know, what, I understand your security concerns. Is there a point here where you go, you know what? Um, most of your concerns we can, we can be handled by the voice provider. I don't care if it's Google or it's it's it's. Amazon or whoever, whichever voice we're talking about here, um, those can be handled with with the folks that are providing the Alexa or or, or the, the Google uh, device. 
is there a point where you know th those security measures are already being taken place by really really great professionals back in Silicon Valley or wherever the servers are? Um, are there are there security levels to the point where we can start deploying them in in pretty you know um, secure in the knowledge that they're going to take care of it for most c corporations? He who holds the keys holds the power. Okay. Right. And holds the knowledge. And, and that's the whole premise behind this is um, we don't want to give the keys to third parties, because even though we might have strategic relationships with those third parties and they they may have service level agreements and security agreements and policies, they could be SOC and NIST compliant and all these great algorithms or not algorithms, but. Uh, um, um, oh, we're going to have to. <laughs> what am I thinking of? I abbreviations, know. abbreviations. <laughs> and all of these great, and all of these great abbreviations, um, that they still hold the keys at the end of the day, right? It, it's still their environment, still their data, still uh, their data in the sense that they're housing that data. And who has access to that information is only controlled by he who holds the keys, right? So they can make all the guarantees that they want, but we've seen what's happened with that in the past. So when we take control of it. As, as IT managers and as AV managers in our own ecosystem, we've got no one to blame but ourselves. Now, the inverse can be said as well, that these service providers have teams of highly specialized engineers and specialists that are there to make sure that these ecosystems are secure. And, you know, they've got the SOC operations center uh, to make sure that uh, they're securing the environment, securing the servers and the applications that are running there. And there's something to be said for that. But again, it comes down to, application, level of privacy and concern uh, to the person who's ultimately using the application at the end of the day. Now, all of that said, um, let's talk about what those applications are. So if you take a, a large financial provider, such as you've mentioned, is that a customer facing application or is it an internal application that's being utilized? Because there's very different requirements for that. So if it's a customer facing application, it may make sense to keep a lot of that in the cloud because of the ability to distribute, uh, the ability to allocate resources dynamically and on demand. Uh, that's a little bit more difficult to do in a static data center. Uh, whereas if it's an internal application, uh, highly sensitive information, then bringing that all on premise can make a lot more sense. So it just it just depends, right? There is no one size fits all in this room. Thank you so much for watching the first part of this month's ITAV. For more information or to see the entire episode, click on the link below or go by the website, avianation.tv, avianation.tv.